going to do a quick but hopefully pretty comprehensive video on how to do the annual maintenance on a 20kW Generac standby generator. It's pretty simple and uh, I've done it a few times now. I've had this for a while so you know I probably cut through some of the stuff uh, but I'll cover it either way. So first thing I did I just stopped I just turned this off I ran it for about 10 minutes turned it off right here at the switch there's auto off and manual I turned it to off that's where you want it to be don't want it coming on for any reason through this process uh, the next thing I did that again it's just from learning uh, and doing it is this is the hose this is the drain hose for the oil right here very, it's pretty hard to, uh, to drain with this hose. There's nothing I can really put under here that, that's that size. So I just take a piece of PVC. I take this off. This is the cap. All per the instructions. Put it on there. And then I can run that down into my oil pan, which I'll go dispose of sometime later today. Or some other day. I get sidetracked. But either way, get that drain, piece of cake, nothing to it. I like to keep some paper towels around, um, just uh, clean up. Sometimes some oil goes here or there, but uh, it's pretty. It's not too. It's not too dirty of a job. So, next thing I do as far as the oil goes is I would uh, go ahead and. Pull the oil filter at this point. Pretty simple to do. It's right here. You just unscrew it. This is the old one. I use the um, the 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 heavy duty. It says it has 30% more. That's what I ordered here. Although this one, it's the same part number, but does not say it's heavy duty or 30% more on the filter for some reason. So uh, I don't understand, but whatever. So that's set aside. Old filter, unscrew, take it off, piece of cake. I like to stick a, a plate or some kind, something to catch the excess oil with as I pull it out. And that way this thing doesn't, this pan doesn't get all filled up with oil. Less, the less oil, less clean up the better. And uh, I'm actually going to go and put these gloves on now. Should have done that earlier. But new oil filter. If you've ever done any kind of oil change, you know, you want to, uh, at the very least, put some nice new clean oil around the O-ring before you put it on. Um, some say that you should put some oil in here. Uh, cuts back on the um, on air in the system. I'm using straight uh, SAE 30. That's what's called for in the manual for my uh, the area I live in the, the, as far as the temperature environment. I'm going to go with this, pour a little oil in because it just makes good sense to me. I'm not filling it. I'm going about halfway. I already put some around the O-ring. I'm going to stick that on there. Make sure I don't cross any threads. Get nice on. And that's about it. At the end, I like to just take both hands, twist it on. Uh, don't go, you don't want to go too tight, but that should be good. Boom. Clean a little oil, like I said, no big deal. Caps back on the hose. Oil uh, filters on. Before I fill the oil, I'm just going to jump into a couple other items. The air filters right here. It's part of the maintenance. Spin those off, clean that. This air filter looks perfect. I'm not replacing it this year. Just doesn't make sense. I used to buy the whole kit, came with everything. Now I just buy a, a filter. Three pack of filters on Amazon was uh, $13. So, uh, just, I can't see change that. I can't see, it just doesn't make any sense. So, that's back in. Spin it back on. Tighten them down. The other part of this maintenance is the spark plug. Um, there we go. Wasn't lined up. 
There we go. Nice, quick. Um, the spark plug, like the filter, is uh, not necessarily replaced, but uh, inspect and replace if needed. Spark plug right here. It uses a 5 8 spark plug socket. Very simple. Spin it, uh, spin it out. Done. Check this out. Piece of cake. This spark plug looks just about as good as new. If I was doing a new spark plug, I would uh, gap it. For this uh, specific generator, that's called to be um, 0 0.03 inches. So I just hit that to 0 0.03 inches. It's right there. Since I've done it before, if not, I would just go old school and press it down right there on the concrete till I got it where it needed to be or pry it a little bit this, either way. Be really careful putting your spark plugs in. I, I know that sounds like common sense, but I've, uh, I stripped the plug once on my boat motor and, and you have to heal coil it. It's a pain. Yeah, it's not something you're gonna wanna have to do. The other spark plug is in the back. Same process, but you're gonna have to take the extension off. There's not enough room. Just enough room for the socket, the ratchet, pull it out, go through the same thing. Simple, simple. Gonna finish up, uh, finish tightening that spark plug up. And uh, again, always make sure you start it by hand before you put the tool on it. Otherwise, you'll be helicoiling, which I also have a video on helicoiling on my uh, lawnmower. You don't put a lot of pressure on there. I, I don't know the torque, but or recommended torque, but it's not much. In fact, I might not even use a three A. I might use a quarter inch ratchet sometimes, just way I don't overdo it. I set my spark plug gapper aside. Once again now, I think I've started it up, warmed up the oil, helps it flow out, drain the oil, use my extension into there, put on a new filter, <clears throat> check the air filter, check both spark plugs. Now I'm gonna go ahead and fill up my oil. The oil calls for um, 1.9 uh, quarts, so that's about, uh, one quart and 28.8, so I'm gonna say 29. So the easiest way to get to that and not overfill it is take three ounces out of here. I have a mark on my cup inside and out. So now I can just pour that in. Now I can dispose of this excess and get the right amount of oil into my machine. It's pretty simple here to get this oil in. I uh, in my haste did not bring a funnel but really pretty pretty uh easy access you don't need a funnel for this job if you don't want and it just helps you to keep from having a stand here but i'll just finish pouring this one in some of the kits come with paper funnels i've seen those uh, i've got plenty of funnels of my own obviously well if you know me it's obvious so I'm always doing something all right that's the point nine this is the full court once again I'm just pour this in no big deal not spilling any so it's a good day knock on wood and uh, I keep on going here and I am just about done, just about done. Don't want to get any air bubbling up in there and the oil will come out. Go slow, slow and easy, slow and easy. It's almost there. I'm gonna go and check uh, even before I finish this up, just to make sure I'm not exceeding 1.9 since when I drained it, you know, I'm not actually measuring what comes out and I don't know if there's a, uh, a clean rag to do this. Clean rag in my pocket. 
don't want to be getting dirt back into my oil system. All right. And there we go. In, out. It's so clean, it's hard to tell. It looks just about right. You know, it's a standard dipstick. Nothing to tell there. Put that back in. I'm going to go ahead and put the rest of this little bit of oil in. Since it doesn't look like be overfilling it or anything. And there we go. So I got my 1.9 uh, quarts of oil in here. And I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, cap back on the oil. Piece of cake. Actually, you know what I might do, especially I got oil sitting here anyway. Just clean this uh, o ring and maybe put some new oil, new fresh oil on there. Yeah, it's always a good, good way to go. Can't hurt. Keeps the, uh, keeps the o ring from cracking and uh, makes it so that it's not tough to get off next time around. Okay, so I know I've done this a couple times, but I'm quick it's easy I'm gonna go over it one more time I ran it for about 10 minutes warmed up the oil I drained it with my extension into my uh, oil pan I checked my air filter I tighten that back down after I put it back in either uh, inspect or replace your uh, spark plugs they're in there piece of cake if you need to gap them you gap them to 0 0.03 inches then Went back into the oil part and I filled this oil up, uh, SAE 30. Um, again, that's what's recommended for this area. Uh, I guess that's based on temperature, I'm pretty sure. And I'm just gonna clean up, like I said, very, very little mess doing it this way. And um, part number on this uh, oversized filter is uh, 070. 185ES. I don't know if I can actually get that to the camera there, but um, that is right there. Moving on. And should be good to go. Last step, really, in this process is to reset uh, the, the computer to say that everything's now been fixed. Computer and the it's right on top here, um, the uh, the panel. You're going to go in here, and if you uh, it says switch to off, uh, I'm going to hold Enter down where it says uh, it'll pop up what needs to be fixed or inspect it. And when the oil change comes up, it tells you to if it's changed, hold it down. If not, hit Escape. I'm going to hold it down. All right, it's reset now. Shouldn't get more blinking lights. Um, over here, you see my red lights on. And that's because the power's off. But we're going to change that in just a minute. Always, you know, with oil, just just always just be super sure everything's back together. I knew a girl one time who you know, didn't do that with her. And she uh, ended up blowing her motor. You don't want to over tighten, but... Everything looks good. I'm going to put this thing on uh, manual, get it started. Right on top 